subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Matt and Garrett back with you again, as always, as we continue to do over and over and over and over and over again. But we are happy to be spending more time with you today. Matt brought a great topic that we're going to dive into in just a second. Before we get into that, if you want to learn more about all the stuff that we talk about, where all this came from, what it's all about, go to ninjaselling.com. You can find out all about Ninja Selling. Larry Kendall, who created all this, um, put all this together in a nice package, which we call Ninja Selling. Also, other programs that we offer as of coaching, mastery, installation classes you can go take so you can get hyper-educated in what Ninja Selling is. And until you choose to do that and go down that route, you have Matt and I here on this podcast, and we will keep you, one, entertained, but also informed on all things Ninja. So Matt, let's jump in. Let's go. Thank you, sir. Let's do it. Thank you, Garrett. That was fantastic, by the way. Beautiful introduction. Didn't have to pre-record it like you. See? See yeah. It just rolls out like... <laughs> So good. Well, I, we do have a really good topic, and I think this is an interesting one because it has to do with a statistic that uh, we don't often pay attention to as realtors. We we kind of focus on transactions and how many homes are selling every single year, yada, yada. But we haven't focused on the mover rate as much. And what's interesting is the mover rate, meaning the percentage of the U.S. population that moves every year has been declining since the 1950s. And people are like, what? How is that possible? We sold more <laughs> homes. We did this. We did that, right? Well, population is also growing and you have new households that start and things like that, that, you know, if you have a child leaving a household, that doesn't necessarily get taken accounted for in the mover rate. Sometimes it does. It really depends on how people answer their census survey that's done, you know, once in a blue moon. But needless to say, the percentage of people who are moving today is about half the rate as it was in the 1950s, yet we still see a similar number of transactions. But the question that this brought up in a conversation or brought up in my mind the other day was, what does this mean for your database? Like, are you taking proactive action in growing your database to ensure that your database doesn't become stagnant? Because I had somebody tell me, Garrett, like, well, all my people have moved recently. And I was like, well, okay, well, let's, one, there's referral opportunities, and two, let's go bring some more people in because as much as we like our database to be like a pure snapshot of American demographics, it's probably not. Yeah, It probably relates to your position in life, probably is closely tied to where you are. And, and if you're in a stable, like, yeah, we're not moving for 10 to 15 years, probably most people in your database are in that same spot. And this is why we want to grow the database. Yeah, the growth in the database, Matt, I find is severely overlooked. And sometimes, uh, especially people that have established databases, they, they kind of get in this like, I've got this big group of people. These are my people. And you're, you're right in what you just said is that a lot of times, you know, they're kind of running in the same boat that you're running in. So prime example, we've talked about this before, but my kids in the last you know, year have gone off to college. Well, I'm in a demographic right now. There's a lot of movement in. There's a lot of moving parts. A lot of people are picking up and moving closer to where their kids are in school. Um, one of my good friends, it's funny, called me yesterday and he's like, we just placed an offer on a property and he's looking for advice. And I'm like, well, that makes sense. They just had their daughter go off to college, just like my daughters went off to college. And they're looking for a house that they're like, we're not worried about the kids now. We're worried about a place that they can come back to. We're looking for more land. We've got more time. We're not running kids to volleyball and to soccer and uh, you know practices and all this stuff. Like, we just kind of want to have a place that's ours now. It's totally different. So that's like my huge demographic. And at the same time, like I'm flying to Houston here in, I don't know, 48 hours and I'm going down there to buy a house. That's that's my number one reason that I'm heading that direction. So it's like you get in these groups where this there's all this turnover happening. And yes, sometimes you will find that you have a database that is they're not. They're actually in the opposite of, of where where Gare Fry's at right now. Like they're they're a group that's like, we're kind of sitting, we're good, we're hanging out. This is the world that we're in. And 
it's up to you to say, do I need to bring in more people to my database? And where am I going to do this? And how am I going to do this? And how can I surround myself with a new group of people? And Matt, I'm a believer. And I'm curious what, what you think about this. I think if you're going to run a relationship business, you always need to be adding to your database. It's never, I got a group and I'm good. I never have to worry about it ever again. It's, we always need to be adding more people in. Yeah, I I 100% agree. And I think part of it is one, this whole period of life that people are in, but also natural atrophy of a database, right? Yep. We talk about this in the installation, about 15% of your database could just go away any given year. Every year. You lose touch. They lose touch with you. They move across country. Hard to keep in touch with clients who move across country or into other states. I get that. Unfortunately, people pass away. There's a lot of things that happen that atrophy your database. And so if if, if you have a 100-person database, that means 15 of those people will not be in your database by the end of the year. So we need to add 15 people just to keep it the same. Well, and Matt, think of it this way. I've got a friend here in Reading that I probably give two referrals to at least a year. People call me, they're like, could you have a good realtor in, in Reading? And I'm like, yep, this is the person I want you to use. Her name's Jen Jackson, by the way. She's absolutely incredible. She's with the realtor group. She's not a trained ninja, but she is awesome at what she does. She gets all my referrals in town. I love her. She's a great friend of mine. Jocelyn, my daughter, is talking about getting her real estate license. That's the worst thing that could happen to Jen Jackson, just, just so we know. Like, <laughs> Sorry, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. She's a dear friend of mine. And she's going to completely understand, by the way, when I let her know that all my referrals going forward will go to my daughter, Jocelyn. Like, what are you supposed to do with that? Like, you can't sit there and say, well, what if I sent more postcards? What if I was nicer to Garrett? What if what if we had what if we took Garrett out for dinner more often? It, that's not even a possibility, and that's how these databases atrophy by fifteen percent every year. Well, and I will say it's uh, Jen. If you're listening, don't lose flow with Garrett because you never know either, right? She can't. I love her. Jocelyn moves to a different state, and then all of a sudden those referrals start coming back, right? So don't think just because that happens in your world, but it can happen. It can happen temporarily. It can happen permanently with somebody. And these are the things that will impact your database. The other thing, Garrett, too, and I think we've talked about this before, adding to your database is special when you're in sales or you're a realtor or or whatever you do, realistically. Because when you meet somebody new today, they get to meet you at your new best of who you are and what you do for a living, right? And tomorrow, it's even better, right? So if... You have a friend who knows you as, oh, man, I know, Garrett. Yeah, dude, he's a wild dude, man. Like, we go back. It's crazy. We do all these wild things. That was a long a long time ago, Matt. Long time but ago. But that's their view, right? And so that person, and they're like, yes, I'm now buttoned up, top finance, all this stuff. I can't refer people to Garrett. I, I, I saw Garrett doing keg stands, right? But everybody who meets Garrett today gets to see super professional. And I'm, I'm not saying that Garrett was doing keg stands back in the day, although... Probably I was, but anyway, I'm not, I'm not denying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Things happen just so you know, <laughs> but people who meet Garrett today, it's like, whoa, successful business owner, all of these things. And it's like, man, it's a, you connect in that different initial context, which changes the way those new people see you. So you meet somebody new today as a realtor of who you are now, that connection could actually produce more referrals for you than someone from 10 years ago, potentially. And this is why adding to your database is also important. It's amazing the baggage that we keep, whether we like it or not. Um, Those little visions that we have of who somebody was in the past. Um, There's a lot of people, by the way, that can can move past it. So I want to be very honest with that. Like there's a lot of people from the past that, you know, I've got a group of guys. There's about five guys that are like my friends from high school. And we have lots of crazy, crazy, crazy stories, lots of crazy memories. They came and visited through college. I went and visited them through college. We have all these crazy journeys. We've rented houseboats all together as a huge group of guys and gone out in the lake together for a week. Like we have all these crazy memories of each other. I would refer any one of them, by the way, and I wouldn't even think twice about it. If, if you needed somebody as a professional in your world that I knew would take care of you at the highest level possible. So it is possible to let go of some of that baggage. 
I find it's the lighter relationships. It's the people that saw you in that role, saw you in that place. You know, they may have saw you that one time at that party where it's like you were the guy that was kind of a little bit the wild and crazy guy. And they're like, oh, that is like my number one memory I have of that person. And also they're a real estate agent, which can kind of like change the percent. It changes the ability. They don't have a whole lot of other stuff to go off of. I find that those are the ones that kind of have the most baggage that's kind of carried with it that will maybe not help you be the best. Now, Matt, as you were saying, these brand new relationships, you do get the opportunity to give them the best of you. They get to see you in a professional role. They get to see you running at this. One of my favorite sayings, Matt, is the future is all made up. And you know, you get to go into today and you get to present yourself any way you want to. You can show up as the most professional, the most knowledgeable person with the deep smarts, and you get to go meet these new people and they go, wow, Garrett really has, that guy brings his game every single time. And you can go out and meet a new person and bring another person in and bring another new person in. And as you start to build this database, this new database of people that now see you as this person that you are showing up as, you've chose to show up this new way, uh, you can build a really strong, strong group of people because they are like, that's all they know you as. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing else. And I think if you're, and you had said, if you're in the relationship business, this should be a must, right? And this isn't necessarily an engine nine or anything like that, but it's built in the underlying. When you think about our Ninja nine, Garrett, we have two of the weekly actions. One is have 50 board interviews each week. And the other is to update your database weekly. So those two things alone being so important that they take up two spots on the Ninja 9. My, by the way, other two things in the dailies are focus on your hot and warm list every day. So you have four out of the nine squarely focused at looking at the people in your world. That means this is important. And if you are focused on activities that keep you in touch with your people, you're going to naturally also add people because think about it. Adding somebody doesn't mean you have to just go to the grocery store and meet somebody new. It could be from the referral that you get yep. from somebody who already exists in your database. Now, it's up to you to make sure you look at that referral as a new relationship coming into your world versus just a new transaction coming into your world. And because we've talked, and I think I don't want people to think this is counter to what we've talked about in keeping your core sphere of influence small. That cycles too. That has atrophy and that brings new people in as well. But if you, I'm thinking about people who are like, well, I have a, database of 200 people and it's been the same database for the past 10 years and i'm not getting a lot of new business now it's like well okay we probably know why because you have that 200 person database probably really isn't 200 people anymore yes you have 200 people that are getting auto flow but if we're not adding to that we're missing out i want to go back to your referrals that you just said when you're building a, a, a ninja business when you're building a, a relationship referral type business we talked about it like a flywheel and how it starts building up momentum and growing. And as you've got this database that's growing, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to depreciate by 15% every year, just left on its own. We've already talked about that. But talk about the most powerful type of person you could add into your database, that they are coming in and the only thing they know is their friend is raving about you. They're raving about the service that you offer, the expertise that you provide. They don't know anything about you other than somebody says, "This, if you're going to buy or sell real estate, you got to use Garrett. If you're going to get insurance, you got to go use Matt Benelli. If you're going to go and have your car serviced, you are going to go to this person because they will take the best care of you ever. This is all they know about you up front. It's like the best platform that you have to build this new relationship off of. Because as you take care of this person that's now in your database and you put them on your mailers and you start staying in flow with them, as you start to build a relationship, the platform of the relationship is this person is a professional in this industry. I would love to build a database of two to three referrals every single week from the people inside of our database and just taking those referrals and going, okay, that's a new person that just came in. Let's really build this relationship in the right ways right up front because, oh my gosh, the baggage that they carry about you is that you're amazing at your business. That's a really good bag to be carrying. <laughs> Let's take that one. 
Yeah. Yeah. Baggage can be a good thing, right? You know, we're always like, oh, baggage. It's like, well, we all got to bring bags with us when we go places, right? Might as well have a good bag <laughs> to bring with us. <laughs> Give people a good bag. What are your bags? You know, this one's Louis Vuitton. Think about it as giving your people a goodie bag as they leave, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, Gary, thanks for doing business <laughs> with me. Here's your goodie bag. Now go share it with all of your people. And, and so I think it is, there's also highlights, Garrett, that I don't, think we pay attention enough to the size and the people in our database overall. And this is Ninja Success Habit number nine, update your database every week, is the most overlooked Ninja nine success habit. And people are like, oh, I look, I'm updating my database. Like, what, what do I got to update? I got to do this, got to do this. Like, no, having a scheduled time where you sit down, it's the central nervous system of your business. Giving it an hour each week is not a lot of time to give to the most important part of your business, setting yourself up so that, you know, am I talking to the right people? Do I have the right frequency with the right people? Hey, there's some new people on the fringe here that could be coming into my database at a higher level. Am I talking to them to bring them in to ensure that my database is growing throughout this year? You know, how am I handling these referrals that turned out to not really be ready to buy or sell right now? Did I pull them into my database and build relationships? Or did I just kind of let them go away, even though these people are introduced to me with a whole great bag of goodies? They got introduced to me as Garrett's the best. Am I talking to them? Or Matt's the best? Because I would be talking about myself at that point. Matt, you're great also. <laughs> and I think this is the question that we need to be asking ourselves a lot more frequently because... The mover rate's going to continue to decline. There's no doubt in my mind that the mover rate, the percentage of people that move every single year is going to continue to go down. And it's really a function of the homes that we live in today. In the 1950s, like, let's think about it. There are small homes, some without heat, certainly many without air conditioning, right? Now you have a lot of homes with air conditioning. Most homes have heat. Every now and then you come across one that doesn't. And they're bigger. Like there's less functional obsolescences. There's less of the the pain of like, oh my gosh, this house is so darn small for let's say a family of three or four is a lot less rare than it was back in the 1950s and 60s. And think about it also, the products that you use in a house last longer too. You know, we're talking putting on like 30, 50 year roofs on homes now. Yeah. There are certain things that don't fail as much. They last long, even though there's a lot of people that will say like, oh, we're in a churn and burn world where things aren't made as good, great quality and things break more often. There are certain things that are designed to last a whole lot longer. And a lot of those things Homes, are, cars, are in your house. A lot of the most expensive things. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and this is why we focus on life change so much too, Garrett. I, 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 and people are like, well, if people are living, like, does the warm list not apply? No, no, no. Still applies because life change is always going to drive real estate change. But now we know that certain life changes may not have the pain threshold that they used to. The threshold is going to be a bit higher. Yeah. So this this does come into a numbers game of people. The interesting thing, and this is going back to like a lot of the reports that are out there right now, Matt, that I'm hearing about, oh, like there's less, you know, less transactions happening right now. The mover rate, you know, is declining and all this. I do think it's really interesting. And I want to just point this out kind of the current society that we're in is that I am watching way more, way more transactions lean to the relationship side. So as we're starting to watch these transitions and the news reports that you're all hearing about it here, and by the way, really check and look at what those numbers are, because a lot of those numbers correlate back to 2019, which was also a good year. There was plenty of business that was rolling through. Right. We're running about the same of that. If anybody has any different stats, I'd love to talk to you about it. But with that being said, I'm seeing a heavier amount of them go to the relationship side. And that's where if you can take the time to analyze your database, break it down and grow it. There's some great, great room around that. The other thing I want to say, Matt, as you're talking about this, this is part of your Ninja 9 is working on your database. I know there's a lot of you when it comes time to working on your database, you open up your CRM and you stare there at the list of names and you kind of play around with certain ones and add in little pieces here and there. And what I want to encourage all of you to do, which I've told many people for many years, Print the damn thing off. <laughs> Print the whole thing off. Yes, it's going to use some paper. We don't like using paper anymore. Use some paper. It's going to help you tremendously. Print the whole thing off. And I have a whole system around this with highlighters and how you can do this. But what the one thing I want you to look at is all the gaps in contact information about the people that you have. 
just take a highlighter and go down and highlight who am I missing phone numbers on? Who am I missing email addresses on? Who am I missing physical addresses on? Who do I not have any notes on at all that I need to go gather some more information on? The minute you have all these places highlighted, you have hours worth of work ahead of you if you choose to, to fill in those blanks. I'm going to go look for their phone numbers. I'm going to look for their addresses. I'm going to go gather this information now. Hours and hours of information. So there you go, Matt. Yeah, you put in that work. It's going to change a lot of things for you. Yeah, what you focus on expands, right? And if you focus on your database a lot, it will expand because you'll naturally look for opportunities to grow it. And so I want everybody to think about that, particularly if you feel like your your business is is stagnating right now is, well, then go out and grow your database, right? And if it's not coming in through referrals, look for those things that you enjoy doing where you can build new relationships on common ground versus just looking for transactions. Because whenever the market churns out fewer transactions, everybody is out there looking for transactions, right? Well, you're looking in the wrong place then, because if that's diminishing and that's all you're looking for, then you're not going to find what you're looking for. However, if you look for relationships, you can actually be the source or the motivator or catalyst for transactions to happen. Because I said this before, I said this back in, oh man, what, 2015, you know, when this similar kind of market-ish, I guess, that there are people who will not buy or sell real estate this year because they do not have a quality conversation with a trusted real estate advisor. And they're just like, well, maybe we can't do it. They just assume that they can't. I'm not saying that yep. we're out there trying to get people to do things they don't want to do. There are people who want to buy or sell this year who will not because they don't think they can and they don't have an advocate in their corner. This is where if you grow your database, you can help those people make something happen that they want to happen in their lives, that they can make happen. And that's another great side effect to growing your database is you create good in the world. And Matt, to, <laughs> to try to prove your point here is that we get to watch this. I watch it all the time where we even have ninjas, people that we coach and we have to point this out that there's some different levels here. There's the, there's the ones that are building, let's say, a hot and a warm list, and they're just churning people through that they're helping with real estate. They're helping people are coming in, they're helping them write contracts or asking all the right questions, putting them through all the right processes. And boom, these people are moving on with their lives and they're buying a house and starting their new journey. There's a middle group, which is they're talking to a lot of people out here. They're bringing a lot of people into their hot list and they're going, you know what? These guys, they kind of want to do something. They've said they want to do something, but they're kind of in a holding pattern right now which makes me always go like, there's a lot more questions we need to be asking them because if we ask them the right questions, you could help them all of a sudden move forward. Then you've got to realize there's a huge group of people, way bigger than anybody that we're talking about here that's out there in general society that has nobody asking them any questions. They have nobody they can turn to and say, hey, we're kind of thinking about this. Like, what, what do you think we should be doing? That group is massive out there. And if you just take the time to start building those relationships, bringing more people in, growing this database, it is a numbers game at the end of the day. The larger da your database, the more people you're socializing with, there are people out there that need help with real estate. I'm never worried about, is there enough transactions? Or is there enough business to help me reach my goals or things like that? Never concerned about it. What I am concerned about is, are you interacting and in flow with enough people? Because flow fixes everything. It's one of my favorite sayings. Gretchen Adams, who's one of our coaches, she's got the best name tag in the world where people have their name on their name tag and then underneath it, it says what their job is. Her name tag says flow and underneath it says, I fix everything. It's the best <laughs> name tag in the world. Flow spelled F-L-O. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Flo. Like the progressive <laughs> insurance lady. I fix everything. That's perfect. It's a mindset that you need to get yourself into because if you're in flow with enough people, there is an abundance of people out there that need your help with real estate. But if we're not having the conversations with them or Matt, if we're doing what you're talking about, which is searching for transactions, what we get in the habit of, of looking at a person and go, transaction? Oh, no. Okay. I'm moving on to this person. Transaction? Not here. Okay. Moving on to the next person. Transaction here? And that's not how a relationship real estate business works. 
You build a relationship over here. And then all of a sudden at the right moment, they go, hey, can you help my friend? Yeah, I totally help your friend. And then all of a sudden this one over here, I didn't spend two seconds on them just seeing if they had a real estate transaction. I spent a couple hours with them. And then they're like, hey, do you have, can you help so-and-so? Or hey, we need help. And it just starts to snowball on itself. But you got to get out of the transactional mindset. You got to get out of that, like you're out there hunting for Easter eggs right now. And I'm just going to keep running around the field till I find one. Do you know, just make friends with the Easter bunny. How's that? Like, <laughs> tell you where all the eggs are. Yeah, here's some. Here's a whole basket. <laughs> yeah, dude, oh, why are gosh. you searching so hard? I got a whole pile of them over here. I'll also add in this one thing. And and I had a client tell me this. She was at a, a conference and heard another popular figure in real estate, uh, maybe semi-popular. I forget, forget who it was, actually. So maybe not that popular. But he had mentioned that the lifetime value of a person in your database, I think he said, and I, I'm not going to get the quote directly, but it's close enough, around $175,000, right? The lifetime value of a person in your database, right? And here's the cool thing that I thought of on top of that is, as you add somebody to your database, you're then adding another $175,000 of career income right there with each person that you add in. And as somebody exits, you're not losing $175,000 because you've already extracted a certain amount of value from that person. So you're, you, so you don't lose that entirety of value, right? But you add in with every person this opportunity of career income of $175,000, if that's the number, which kind of makes sense. I guess if you think of like the average real estate career and all that kind of stuff, you start adding that up and people are like, oh, well, my database right now, that means if it's a hundred people, I'm only going to make, what is that? 1 million, 75,000, something like that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm doing the math on it. 1 million, 750,000 over a career doesn't seem like a lot. They're like, oh, but over a career, that's not, that's not enough money. It's like, well, but how many people are you adding to your database each year? Because if you're adding 10 people to your database every year, that means you're adding, wait, no, so 100 people times 175,000 is more than a million. If you're at, Matt should have done the math beforehand. Definitely should have done the math beforehand. Matt, there's a lot of holes in it. But if you're adding 10 people a year, you're adding 1.75. So if you had 100 people, that's 17 million over the course of your career. That's a lot, right? And if you spread it out, maybe it doesn't seem like a lot because if that's GCI and you got to split it out and all those things. But if you add 10 people a year, you're adding upwards of close to $2 million in potential lifetime value for your business. That's a pretty awesome thing to do. So, And I'm going to go back to, yes, there is, it, it, as I said, it's a volume thing. It's a numbers thing. It just works out. I've been doing this for 18 years, Matt, like consistently, actually longer than that. Because I was, before I was teaching Ninja, I was using Ninja. It's one of those interesting things that the relationships have never let me down. They've never let one of my clients down. Uh, I have a lot of clients that I always joke about. If you dip your toe in the water, all the fish jump. Well, they have a tremendous database. And I was like, my business is a little slower right now. I'm like, step your systems up. Like, you're not in flow with all these people. And all of a sudden they go out and in 30 days, they apply the systems into their database. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm swamped right now. I'm like, I got, I got business coming out of my ears. It's like, yeah, because you, you just showed up for these people. The transactions are always there. They're not going away, but you definitely need to show up. You need to not be in chasing mode. You need to be in attracting mode. And you kind of got to let go. Like the more you are in that, that I got to make business, I got to get transactions. You think that's the, the hustle that you should be having. Like, oh, I've got hustle. I've got game. I'm going to make this all happen. And that hustle and game makes a lot of people in relationship built businesses go like, oh gosh, like go away, go do something else. But if you can really lean into those relationships, there's more business there that you know what to do with. You just got to show up, be a good person, be there to help them out, be there to listen to them. All the numbers work. Yeah. You just got to, you got to show up. Yeah. Build new relationships. That's where we started this whole thing, Matt. Yeah. Add new relationships, grow your database. The numbers will all work out in the long run. They will. So make sure you're doing Ninja Success Habit number nine and that you have a plan for growing your database each and every year. Your business will thank you. You'll thank yourself. And, and honestly, this actually helps you save time too in the long run. So, well, we have some fun topics coming up. 
for future podcasts. We have some guests that are going to be People, coming up yeah. over the next several episodes, which are really awesome. Some some pretty pretty awesome guests too. Someone that you may know of and heard of and products that you've heard of and someone that you may not have heard of who's actually probably going to change the way you do certain parts of your business, which is going to be really, really awesome. So I'm excited about the guests we have coming up. I'm excited about the topic list that we have coming up. Uh, a lot of people ask, how do you guys come up with all these topics? Well, I'm I'm looking at our list right here and I have to scroll on my screen to get through it, which is amazing. So we got... We're going to be around for a long time, folks. We're not going anywhere. We use chat GPT. Uh, we just type in <laughs> need topics for the Ninja Selling podcast, and it just gives us a whole list. It gives us the whole script, too, actually. Yeah, everything. That's how I do my intros. Just, chat GPT, tell me a good intro for the Ninja Selling podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably do an episode on that service also at some point. And we will do an episode on the service. One of the things that's actually on our list as we dive into that, I know a lot of you are diving into things like that in other areas of AI. AI will never replace your personal relationships, though. Understand that. Nope. It cannot replace that. And so as long as you continue to build and maintain strong relationships, you will be irreplaceable as well. So... Guys, thanks for listening in. We appreciate you so much. If you're not a part of our community, head over to Facebook and search for The Ninja Selling Podcast. You'll find a community a Facebook group there with 12,000 people strong. Great place to ask questions, share value, get value, connect with fellow ninjas or people who are interested in learning about ninja. A lot of people in there who are new to the ninja world. So if you're new, don't worry. Come on in. We accept everybody and everyone as long as you answer a few questions to get in there. And if you want to learn more about Ninja, as Garrett said at the beginning, head over to ninjaselling.com. We're here to help you. Appreciate you guys listening so much. We love you all. Have a great day. And for any of you that have questions about it, Matt will be doing a full workup of the equation that equals uh, each person in your database and the lifetime value that they have to you and how many people and how they move in and out and how that whole thing works. So just know he'll be doing a <laughs> in-depth, deep dive into that. It might be as... As I totally messed up my math today. He might be all by himself. Multiplying by just two decimal points. Like, who knew it would be so hard on the fly? <laughs> <laughs> so just wait for that one. That'll be coming out soon. And uh, stay tuned. There it is. Thanks, everybody. See ya. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.